You're listening to Channel Talk 101, where we discuss topics that explain the best tactics in channel marketing to help manufacturers sell more of their products. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Channel Talk 101. And uh, we've been having some great conversations over the past few weeks uh, with uh, experts, professionals, and um, executives um, with, with different different sort of companies within that industry sector, of course, channel marketing, channel sales, and more importantly, from my side of things, from my background, is channel incentives. And I had Richard Stevens on, who, of course, is the president of uh, Channel Assist, um, uh, last week, and we, we talked about you know the word engagement that was the common word that we used throughout the uh, throughout the segment and because I went in there saying oh reward and recognition incentive programs etc and, and Richard said hey it's all about engagement which is is perfectly right I mean you, you can see the the segment below it's the it's, we actually got it on the the page below as the link um, but one of the things that we talked about which I, I kind of flagged and I thought you know what I want to dive into this a little bit more was you know, the, the, the difference between a, a program succeeding and failure, it can be keeping the momentum going uh, and keeping that engagement going, but also uh, how you run the program. And so I thought, you know, I'll have Richard back on. And Richard's in the virtual studio with me today. So thanks again for, for joining me. And yeah, we had a great conversation last, last week uh, about, about engagement and, and what that really means in channel incentives. Um, but as we talked off mic, I said, I want to talk about, you know, this keeping up momentum piece. So thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me again, Carl. Appreciate it. So we talk about like a successful program um, is about continuous com uh, communication, don't we? Um, why is it important to the core message in front of your channel reps? Well, you know, the we all have differences in how we listen. In fact, there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? Um, and, and in a lot of cases, there's a lot of noise that's being pushed out to these channel reps. Um, so they hear it, but that doesn't mean that they're listening to it. Uh, combine that with the fact that, um, look, in some of these larger companies, you're talking about thousands, tens of thousands of sales reps. And like any uh, business, they're, they come from all walks of life. Uh, they're in their 20s, they're in their 50s, they're, uh, they're men, they're women, they have different religions, different cultural backgrounds. We all hear things differently. That's why when someone says something, it's not about what they say, it's about how you perceive what they said. Um, and so the, it's really important to make sure that you constantly communicate, but it's that it's not the same message you're trying to communicate. Uh, if I want to get a, a group's attention. Well, I have to repeat that same message over and over again. I mean, there's plenty of studies out there that talk about saying something once to a customer isn't going to stick. So how do you make sure that you keep that engagement um, on a regular basis? Well, you have to communicate often. You have to be somewhat consistent in your messaging, but also you have to also add new messages to it to make it interesting. Look, uh, look at your children. Um, I have two sons in their 20s, and when they were, you know, little kids, I'd say, hey, go clean your room, and they'd go, they'd clean their room. If I said, hey, go clean your room now, the odds are they wouldn't even hear me. Actually, I could tell for you for a fact they would not even hear me say that because I'd say it again, and they'd say, well, you didn't tell me before that. Well, and it's never mind that they're in their 20s, and I have to tell them to go clean their room. That's a whole different conversation. But the point I'm making is that if you tell your children to clean your room, they'll do it. But then if you tell them to clean the room, you know, when they're four and five or six years old, you have to say it over and over and over again. But then when they get into their teens, they don't even hear you. So it's the same message. Uh, why don't they hear me? Well, they don't hear me because it's the same message. And I'm a sales guy, so I feel comfortable saying this. Salespeople are like children. Uh, they follow they follow signing objects. Hey, look, there's this squirrel. I don't want to go chase it. They, they, those are things that sales reps do. Something that's interesting to them right there and then. They're impulsive in a lot of cases. So if you're going to communicate with them, you need to be effective. Well, what's effective communication? Well, you have to take into consideration the, the wide variety of people in your audience. And because I say something to Carl, doesn't mean that someone else sitting beside you takes it the same way. So I need to say it different ways to make sure that that very broad audience gets it. And you have to do it over and over and over again, because I may 
you stuff, say something to you like, hey, Carl, I can help you make 500 bucks a day. Great. Awesome. I want to work on whatever makes me that 500 bucks. But someone else between now and next week may say something, well, Carl, you can make $600 doing this or even $200. That may distract you from making that 500 because it's new and it's interesting. So my job is to make sure I stay in front of you. And how do I do that? Well, the best way is well, to communicate. And well, how do I do it? I have to mix it up. So, so I, I, I love what you say. I, I love what you, what you, what you're saying there, because, um, you know, when I was training in radio back in the early days, uh, we used to have this saying, uh, repetition builds reputation. And so if you say it enough times, cause you know, it's like, it's like anything, as you say, if you don't, if you don't communicate something regular and often and cont- and sort of make sure that um, the continuity is there, you know, and make it, as you say, fresh every time. But I also remember back in the day when we were planning incentives, you know, we used to go to what we call the theme book. Um, and we used to go and say, let's let's put a theme on this as such. Is that is that still as important, um, you know, uh, these days for that continuous imp- uh, uh, communication? Absolutely. Um, our brains are broken into, you know, logical and creative, right? Um, and so logic says, hey, I can make money um, doing this, you know, taking training, selling products, whatever it might be. But the fact is, and everybody, they're, logic brain and creative brain fight for control. And so creative says, hey, this looks really interesting. Yeah, you know what? I know I can make more money doing this over here, but this looks interesting. So I want to, you know, I want to do this today rather than selling this, the other product uh, that I just sold yesterday. So you got to you gotta mix it up. Uh, we, we, you know what? One of our clients uh, uh, yesterday hosted a, uh, uh, a trivia game uh, for our company. So, you know, they love how, what we do for them. And we've actually done this for them in many cases, and we're about to do this at their Christmas party. And basically we use a product and, um, it is a trivia game. And so yesterday we had a little mini Christmas party with our, our clients and 15 questions popped up on the screen and we had the opportunity to answer the question, just like you're in a bar, you know, the quicker you answer it, the more points you get, that kind of thing. And they gave prizes to our employees, which was fantastic. Had a great time. But the reason I tell you this story was she communicated a message to us by a medium that didn't ever scream that message. She said, we're really happy with what you're doing for us, Channel Assist. And she used trivia to communicate that message. So everybody, you ask everybody at Channel Assist, hey, is our big client really happy with us? They would say yes. How do you know that? Well, they know that because they just spent half an hour on a trivia game with us. So the medium was the message in that particular case. And that's using creativity. And then I'll go back to what I said previously. Everybody receives information differently. So you're going to have to come up with creative ways to get that message across. And there's no one in society that I don't think that it enjoys a good game or be, or being being creative to think about how they're uh, doing their job. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I did a se- I did a session just the other day um, uh, with with one of our, our other partners, um, SCA Promotions, and we talked about game of gamification, uh, and you know, in, and engagement came up in that conversation as well. So there's a lot of cross. Um, you know, references about making something interactive, et cetera, and, and enjoyable. And as you say, you know, different people uh, enjoy to intake different ways. You know, one of my questions, and I think you kind of answered it, um, you know, in, in the past two questions, but I think there's a, a, a broader question of what other channels are there? I mean, you, oh, you mentioned yeah. about, um, you know, there's, we're all different. We're all human beings. That's what I always like to say. There's never one person that's exactly the same. Uh, and you have to, as you, and we talked about it last, last week, uh, you've got to treat everybody as an individual, uh, but also be smart about how you deliver it. So what are the channels uh, are there to, to communicate? So there's, um, there's a lot of ways that you can communicate with your channel. So let's start off with, um, What's utopia? Okay, so utopia is everybody sells your product. Well, if if that's the case, that's a direct sales force. So, you know, I employ these people. They only train my product, uh, uh, sell my product. They trained on my product. They're prepared, but their focus is solely my product. 
The downside of utopia is I have to pay them. I have to manage them. So the reason people build channels is that they don't have to pay these people. And in the past, they didn't have to train them. That's changed significantly. But now I've also got a much broader reach because I can get a lot more people in the channel than I can hire directly. But now I need to communicate with them. Well, one of the challenges has always been, well, I've got account managers to manage, to manage the, the channel, but the one-to-one -one relationship is impossible. In order for them to have that, they'd have to meet with every rep for 10 minutes once a year. Well, how is someone engaged at that point? So let's use technology to help. So let's start off with the most basic of technologies, the portal, the website. So create a website that speaks to people. Like personalize a website. So if someone sells to a specific industry or sells in a specific geography, highlight information on the page that speaks to them, okay? Now, that could speak to a very broad group of people that are doing the same thing, but that's one way to hone in on who you're targeting. Show leaderboards. How many points have they got? How many things have they sold? What promotions are new? And put them on that front page that are of interest to them. All right, so that's the that's the number one step is personalize the, the, the tools that you're using to the channel. So when they show up on the page, it grabs them. They don't have to go to scroll down or use a hundred clicks to get where they need to go. That's number one. Number two is you can use the old standby of email. Now, the problem with email is, well, governments have put a lot of rules in around spam. Now, if you develop the channel properly, your emails aren't spam, but that's a hard thing to get around. So in the sense that you know, everybody has to buy in and there's a lot of challenges associated with that. But there are other tools you can use like social media. So start to use LinkedIn. LinkedIn's the obvious one whereby you're communicating to the channel as a whole. One of our customers did the 12 days of Christmas. Now we did it for them and they had giveaways. And to get something in the 12 days of Christmas, you basically had to make a comment on LinkedIn. All that comment had to be was Merry Christmas or thank you or how you doing. And they would be able to get, uh, put in a draw to win a prize. And yesterday was the 12th day of Christmas. So that's one way you can use social media. You can use Instagram and Facebook in other ways, depending on your target audience and where your channel sales reps go to. If they're in retail, Facebook may make more sense. But you can also look at surveys and polls. Uh, we had a customer in 2018 that ran a survey and they got $25 for answering the survey. Uh, then the next year we ran a survey and we'd implemented a very unique approach where they got $25, but they also got a bunch of points that didn't have any real value, but they got all these extra points. So if you answer the survey, $25, you get 100 points. The 100 points just put you in a draw later in the year, but there's no tangible value to them. We saw 150% increase in participation yep. for something that didn't have any tangible value. So there's a lot of creative ways. And then finally, gamification. Make things fun. So use games to get people engaged. So if you're going to train them, make a game out of it. In fact, both of my kids, and they'll probably hate me doing this, but they, they're ADHD and they have a learning disability. And I couldn't, I can't wait for when mathematics or history or geography or English can be taught in a video game. Because my kids can remember every top, every gun that they could had in, 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 uh, uh, in uh, Call of Duty. The, the video games, thank you. <laughs> and how much ammo it would have, the size of bullets it have. I, they can remember everything about that. So what that said to me was, is they didn't have a memory issue or a learning issue. What they really had was an attention issue, is how do I get their attention? So using gamification will help with, pe with people's retention and keeping their interest. And I know that's a very long-winded answer, but there's just so many different mediums to get people's engagement. I, th I think that's right. I mean, one of the, I mean, one of the things, uh, I'm going to tell a real quick story based on what you just said. I remember uh, when my, my kids are in, the, in his mid twenties now as well. But I remember going to um, a, a game store uh, and buying the latest game, etc. And I, I bought. He went in. He chose it and everything. And I was in my office. I was doing some work. And he came down about you know three hours later. He said, "Can I go back to the store? I've finished the game." I said, "What do you mean you finished the game?" And he goes. I've finished it. I've done all the levels. And I said, but how did you finish the game? He says, well, I kept hitting a wall and then I'd learn. And I'd, I'd, and so you're right. People, the kids are absorbing information. Younger people, I should say, not just kids, but younger people are absorbing information in a different way. So, But what I'm hearing you say, which is interesting, um, 
it sounds like you're treating in uh, channel reps, you know, these um, this is a B two B communication, like a consumer, uh, and and the look and feel of these things that you're explaining sounds like as if you're building a consumer campaign rather than a B two B campaign has changed over the years. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Um, not really. It's just it's a different audience. I think that you know. So I'm a big sports guy. Um, I, I love all sports. I love uh, hockey, football, basketball, baseball, tennis. I love them all. Um, and, you know, I'm, as you may not be able to tell, but I'm six foot seven, or at least I was six foot seven in my younger days. I, I think I'm shrinking. Um, and the thing about sports is that it's very rare you find an ex exceptional athlete in one sport that's not good in other sports. Well, why is that? Well, the reason it is is because sports share a lot of commonalities. Right. If you have good hand eye coordination and can hit a baseball, the odds are you're pretty good at tennis yeah. or the odds are that you can catch a ball. Right. So there's a lot of shared skills. And I would say that there's the same between targeting a consumer audience and targeting a business audience, except they're different. And, and the best way I could describe this is um, when people ask me to describe the business we're in. Uh, because they don't understand what we do or they're not in it, I use the word loyalty. But as I've mentioned in the last conversation we had, I don't like the word loyalty because loyalty, loyalty is about emotion. And so if I have an airline points card uh, and I'm going to fly, I'm going to fly that airline. That's no better, no worse than the other airline, but I have a points card. So I'm going to be loyal to that airline. I don't look at it that way from business. Um, I don't expect that, and people should never expect that channel sales reps are going to be loyal to you as a vendor, um, right? Now, they may be, but they're not really. They're, you got to give them a reason to sell your product. And the question you need to ask is, why would a channel sales rep sell my product? If it's loyalty, then that means that their loyalty and their emotion can change. You need to give them a business reason to sell your product. Now, you can use a lot of the same tools that you may use to target consumers, but you're also gonna use a lot of tools where you wouldn't target consumers. So how often does a consumer ask for an ROI? Oh, not that often. You know, sometimes they do, but they never ask the manufacturer for the ROI, do they? Well, that's different. The salespeople ask for the ROI all the time. Why? Because their customers are gonna ask for the ROI. So that's where there's some substantial differences. The fact is, is that you want to treat your channel sales force like a direct sales force, but you can't because the numbers don't work. So you're going to need to use tools and anything you can find that are going to help engage them. And in some cases, it's going to be great consumers tools like maybe gamification. But there, there are significant differences. Don't count on loyalty. Ask the question, why should they sell my product? And, you know, I may have mentioned this before, but I've asked hundreds of senior executives because I've gone to a lot of conferences, this question, why should someone sell your product? And Carl, not a single one of them have answered it correctly. Right. And they agree after I explain it to them that they haven't answered it correctly. Because what they do is they say, you know, great product, great service, top five product, blah, 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 blah. And I look at them and I'd say, you, great answer, except you just described why someone would buy your product not why someone would sell your product. And there's a difference. If the consumer wants a product that's going to meet their need. If they buy a product and it meets their need, they're happy with the product. That doesn't always have to be the best product. Salespeople are happy to sell a product that meets the consumer's need. But if I can provide the sales product, something that's in it for them, other than the commission they make from their, from their, their, their employer, why wouldn't you provide it? because they hear so much noise, there's so much competition, you need to stand out, you need to differentiate yourself. So why should they sell your product, Carl? Well, the reason they should sell my customers' products is because I pay them to take training, I pay them to sell the product, I make it fun, I have games, I have a community. These are all reasons and I make it easier to sell the product. That's why someone should sell your product, not because it's a good product. And so, those are the things you have to look at when you look at consumer versus sales or channel or channel. I, 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 you've, you've just answered my next real question. I was going to say, you know, what are you seeing that that's leveraging the most, um, you know, out of 
you know, these communication channels. But I think you've just mentioned them all. I mean, mobile, um, gamification, the portal, et cetera. So, so I, I think what I'd like to hear from you is, if, if you wouldn't mind summarizing, you know, what, what, what does Channel Assist bring to the table that helps people keep with i mean this theme of this this conversation is keeping the momentum going getting that communication out and do you do that over at channel assist well you know um it, it, it's, a, it's a great question um and there's, there's there's a number of surveys out there that talk about um marketing programs um and the, the interesting thing about marketing programs is every company when they design a marketing program is gung-ho to go and gung ho to get started. Oh yeah, we're gonna do, and it's gonna drive leads for us and it's gonna drive more revenue and our customers are gonna be happy as, as they could be. Um, but look at that marketing program two, three years later and where's the energy behind that marketing program, right? Uh, they tend to fade away. So this, the, are this program's no different, except what we bring to the table is we have dozens and dozens of clients. And much like that great athlete, we take and steal ideas from all kinds of industries and all kinds of businesses and use them to help every customer. Now, we don't, we don't uh, you know, in, in many cases we sign in non-disclosure, so I can't share their data and the information. But the fact is, is that we can take best practices and determine what's gonna work for you that will work for other companies, even cross industry. So what I would say is this, is that when a company decides to run this kind of program, if they decide to run an internal, usually what they'll do is they'll say, hey, Jane Smith, we'd like you to run this program. Well, little do they know that this, these are often, in some cases, multi-million dollar programs, but even if they're not a multi-million dollar program, people don't have a clue what's involved in running these programs. We have talked, when we talk to prospects, and these are prospects that have identified they want to run this program, we spend hours with them. And the feedback we get is even amongst our competition is that they spend way more time with us because we ask so many detailed questions around what the program is trying to do. So the first thing that we do, Carl, is we say, what do you want to achieve? What is your objective? Now, we started the corporate objective, but then we worked with the business units because lots of companies have multiple products and multiple business units. So what do you want to achieve? What do you want to sell? Who do you want to sell to? Where do you want to sell? Those are all questions we ask. And then what we do is we say, we're going to design a program that's going to address all of those things. Now, they're going to do the same thing. But what we do is because it's our business is we stay on top of it. And in that program, we're going to design communication strategies. We're going to design promotions and a wide variety of promotions. We had a customer yet last year that ran 50 different promotions, all running at different times, some running at the same time, and they were all targeted to different audiences for different products to different geographies. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give us the sales reps access to software. So when they sell something, they can go on and make a claim. And in some of our customers can actually take a picture of an invoice and get paid the very next day. So there's an immediate gratification and that payment the very next day gets them excited about selling the very next time. Right. So, damn, I'm going to sell that same thing the next time so I can get paid. That instant gratification builds that that momentum. And then what we do is if any of those sales reps have questions on a claim, we have a, a white labeled help desk. They can call us and we'll pick up the phone and answer on behalf of our clients. So if there's any problems they have, we address it. Customer never touches it. But then finally, what we do is we provide tax receipts. Because at the end of this, well, these are salespeople earning money. And if they earn over $50 in the United States, they need a tax receipt. My God, what a pain in the behind that is. But we do all of that on behalf of our clients. We run an end-to-end -end program where our clients, all they have to do is work with us and help us define what they want the program to look like. And we do everything else. In fact, we run multi-million dollar programs and our customers have half a person dedicated to it. We have a full staff that are specialists in different areas to focus on that. And that's really what we do. And that way, from year to year, you don't lose momentum because we reinvigorate the program on a regular basis. We have constant communication, that one-to-one -one communication that changes and evolves as our customers evolve and as their sales reps evolve. That is and that's how we have longstanding customers for decades. 
That's fantastic. That's fantastic, Richard. I mean, my goodness, I, I'm going to put uh, the link to to the the microsite that gives more information about this uh, within this segment. I mean, the one other thing you, you don't even realize when you when that that help desk that you talk about, and you've got all these hundreds or thousands of of channel reps that that have access to these programs that may have a question. That's a big deal, and and for you to be able to handle that that. That, and take it away from the client you know it may sound oh it's just a help desk. help desks people are asking all the time questions well think about it this way carl it costs you 25 dollars carl i'm going to give you 25 dollars week goes by month goes by hey you know richard promised me 25 dollars i haven't got it how, what are you thinking about me? You're thinking, gee, what a jerk. He promised me $25 and didn't give it. Now, if I didn't promise you $25, we may have the exact same relationship we had today. But what I've done is I've changed the game. So by offering you that $25 and not giving it to you, you've gone from, I like Richard, to now Richard's a jerk because he made a commitment and didn't live up to it. So not paying people on time, which is actually a very big problem in our industry, um, is a huge issue. And that will directly affect the performance of their program. Help desk is a big part of that. So they gave me this money and they're not paying me this money and I can't use their system because I have a problem and yet they're not willing to help me with it. Yeah, I'm not selling that product. Anymore. Yep. It's just too, right? So that's where people go. And, and just to give you an idea, Carl, uh, and I'm not going to name any names, but we actually have sales reps in our programs that have made $150,000 a year in working and selling our customers' product just through our program. So this is a big ticket item. It makes a serious difference in many people's lives. And one thing I, sh I should add is, um, one of the, the it's, it's funny, is that we help our customers a lot and we drive a lot of their revenue. But we don't get a lot of the recognition that I would think that we would get, and that's okay. But the one thing that we got huge recognition from in, with our clients was as soon as we put a charitable button on our websites, so what we did is we offered sales reps the ability to take, so let's say they earn $500 selling one of our customer's products. We gave them the ability to donate $100 by the push of a button. Our, the, the executives and our, and our customers all sent us emails. They loved that we made it easy for them to give to charity uh, because this, in a lot of cases, is sometimes found money. Uh, so it's great that we enable people to be able to provide the charities or even put towards uh, their, their retirement fund. So we, we can build all of that into this to really build a strong relationship between the channel sales rep on a one-by-one -one basis and the vendors that we're working with. I love that. I love that. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm sure we'll get on to a conversation, to a conversation separately, maybe not on mic, but you know, I'm very involved in, in, in that, in the nonprofit world. And that is a huge applaud for you for doing that that's great well unfortunately we come to the end of our conversation i mean my goodness we've been going you know over 20 minutes now so thank you again richard i am um, i know that we, we're planning you know several of the conversations about drilling down into into channel incentives but thank you for joining me today because uh, again these are golden nuggets for people that um you know, are thinking of of running and sort of uh, getting a little bit better return on their investment. They need to be talking to companies like yourself over at Channel Assist. So thank you for joining me this morning. Hey, Carl, thanks for having me and uh, happy holidays. And I know people are going to hear this after Christmas, but happy holidays to you and your family and everybody else that's listening on this I podcast. Appreciate it. Thanks, Richard. Same over to you as well. Thanks. Take care. That was Richard Stevens, of course, president of Channel Assist. And my goodness, what a great conversation. Now, if you if you if you stuck with the conversation all the way through, you know, you'll have heard one thing that I think is very important. It can be really daunting when you think about, you know, running a program and keeping that uh, momentum going. And you need a company like Channel Assist really to to help you design, you know, implement and execute and keep it going because we all get we all get busy, don't we? We all. I mean, there's tons of things that I want to go and do, but I and, and and I start something off like Richard said. You know, I start something off, and then I go, oh, I've got to got to go and do something else. But if you've got a dedicated team 
who's really focused and laser focused on making this a success, then you will become a success. So, so check out all the links below. And um, as I always say on these shows, you know, go out there, have some fun, make some money because we're in business. And uh, you know what? Be safe out there. So until the next time, bye-bye. There we go.